Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, September the 20th. My name is Eric Wilkinson and some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies you can then implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also, past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, let's get it on with some economic data across the pond. Tomorrow, we actually get all the good economic data uh, with the flash estimates coming out of Europe. Today, later on, we get flash estimates for manufacturing coming out of Japan. That's not out right now, but tomorrow should be a good day for data for sure. Today, it's okay. Um, let's talk about Great Britain's retail sales coming in at 0.3%, uh, expected to be a negative 0.2%, and they revised last month's number up, excuse me, last month's number up to 0.9%. Uh, that was up from 0.7%. So pretty good data on the retail sales coming out of Great Britain. Also, we got the Philly Fit. Philly Fed Manufacturing Index here in the United States came in at 22.9, expected to be 17.5. So we've been seeing these, uh, these Fed Manufacturing Index come out better. Last week, I think that we had a couple that started to miss, but we're back on track with Philly Fed coming out better than expected there. Unemployment claims in the United States coming out at 201,000, expected to be 210,000. So less people claiming for unemployment is generally good. Uh, also, consumer confidence waned. Uh, oh, that's uh, consumer confidence in Europe waned a little bit, coming in at negative 0.3, expected to be negative 0.2. Back again into the U.S., uh, we got existing home sales coming in line with expectations at 5.34 million units being sold, and natural gas storages finally coming in at 88 billion cubic feet, expected to be 81 billion cubic feet. And like I said, Jeff. Uh, Japan starting to come out with their flash estimates later on this evening, uh, about 8.30 Eastern. And then tomorrow we have the rest of Europe uh, on their flash estimates. All right, let's talk about the overall markets. Crude oil coming back down after testing. Again, that 61 Fibonacci that lines up with the value area high. That's a pretty tough nut to crack. Remember, value areas tell us where basically 70% of the transaction or time has been. Anything outside of that, you can see that that's when it starts getting a little overextended to the upside or even to the downside if it was the value area low. That is where the market starts to lose a little participation up at those areas as more long start to cover. They realize it's been extended. They start to cover the sh uh, shorts kind of hold off a little bit and the market comes back down. That's kind of what we see uh, with this type of situation. So that value area high lining up with the 60 Fibonacci is a pretty uh, strong line in the sand, if you will. Uh, so we're back up into the 70s, but starting to slowly come off uh, throughout the day today. All right, let's talk about gold futures. Gold is unchanged up above that 1200 psychological level. So not a whole lot to see here in Bitcoin of course, uh, is pretty much dead in the water, it feels like, at this point. Uh, I know some guys on CNBC are calling for the upside, but I'd almost fade the heck out of that. All right, bonds. Uh, you know, I even tweeted this out this morning. I uh, was going back and forth with uh, Keith that used to do CNBC. He was like, hey, my long bond position is not doing too well. I'm, I just tweeted back, hey, the Fed is destined to overdo the increased interest rates. They always do. They go too far, too fast, uh, trying to get ahead of it. And I think we might see that happening if they start to do that. I mean, if they start following what we've seen in the past with history. All right. But that being said, I think we found a bit of a bottom. We're right there at the value area low, just like I talked about uh, with, the, with the crude oil. Uh, being overextended. This is overextended to the downside. We start getting below this value area. You can see that volume and time spent down there just really starts backing off. So um, to me, this is a little overdone to the downside. I don't have any positions to the upside in the bonds, but it may be a good time to start uh, looking to add some TLT to the upside. All right, on to the VIX. It's coming off. We're still in double digits, but barely holding on. 
And that's because, like this, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up almost 250 points right up against uh, tweezer tops, if you will. So any kind of sell-off back to unchanged or something like that towards the end of the day would be very bearish in my eyes, uh, especially now that we've got that gap. That would look not too good. It would look very toppy, tweezer tops type uh, situation. But Dow Jones doing very strong, right, or working very strong right now near the highs of the day. NASDAQ again. Off to the races, we're almost right from the get-go on the overnight trading. We're up 74 points on the NASDAQ. Not a real um, support resistance area there, but we are off to the races. New historical highs in the mini S&Ps. Almost looks like they want to go and test that 3,000 mark, which isn't really too far away, to be quite honest. That can be done in a couple of days with the e-mini S&Ps pretty easily. Again, um, you know, a sell-off to unchanged might make this look pretty bad. Uh, although then we would have those counter opposing dojis, which kind of gives you a continuation pattern. So not a whole lot to see in the charts right now, um, which is why I've kind of been on the sidelines, not really being crazy aggressive at these points. I want to make sure that we are either going to continue to the upside or um, make a correction. So I am long deltas uh, that I'm trying to, you know, pair off a little bit. Uh, at these all-time highs. So I'll talk about how I'm doing that here in a minute. Well, let's talk about the breakdown in the E-mini S&P. This is the 30-minute chart. Uh, overnight inventory didn't do a whole lot, but you can see no attempt get overnight inventory longs out. That is pretty darn bullish, you guys. Anytime the day session comes in and goes, overnight, you're right, let's go. Um, let's take off to the races. That uh, is pretty pretty good validation. One thing to note with that though, is that creates a big gap that needs to be covered. So if we go back and check out the day session, I know I'm gonna get a little long in this video today, but I think it's pretty important that we talk about it, uh, about how these day sessions don't really care about the overnight session. And if I can think of a way to get off the uh, overnight session real quick, I know I can do it. Um, I just have to remember how to do this quickly and uh, easily, and I don't remember how to do it right offhand. When I'm trying to think about what to say next and try and think about other things, it just doesn't work. All right, so forget about it, but you can check it out on your own time. There is going to be a gap there near an all-time high that is going to be in the back of people's heads that needs to be uh, corrected. All right, so uh, Tesla, I've been talking about trying to get some short deltas on Tesla, adding some short calls. I was able to do that early this morning off the open. When we were right there at that point of control, I was thinking, you know what, we're at the point of control. Even if it starts settling down here, we're gonna get the volatility to come out. I wanna sell some volatility when it's high with no earnings and things of that nature around this particular underlying. So selling the calls was pretty good. I Remember, I started out looking at selling the, I think it was the 340, uh, 345 calls and then it went to the 355 calls um, on that rally the last couple days 365 calls were even being considered by me but today went in and uh, decided to put on that trade in Tesla remember I'm long the two-year puts in there so I'm obviously bearish so I went in to uh, Tesla and sold the October 355 calls in there for $4.35. So that almost gets me up to 360. You can see that the 355 calls are above this value area high. Um, 360 is way up here, but I wanted to really get above this value area high. I did look at taking a little bit less credit and getting above this area here, but I went with the 16 Delta, did a little bit smaller tranche and as the day has gone on, it has gone in my favor. So it's actually a nice big winner already um, from when I put it on. So that was a nice little trade there. All right, a couple of trades that I'm looking to, uh, Apple, I'm not quite sure why I have up here, um, other than just keeping an eye on it. Uh, with Apple, oh, actually I am working in order to get out of Apple. That's why I put this on here, you're right. So in the October, uh, 200 puts that I'm short in October with this move higher. I'm um, looking to get out. You also see volatility rolling out. So I'm trying to get out for about 50% of my max profit. So I'm 20 cents away or something like that right now. But just wanted to give you guys a head up. We started getting a big move. It's had some big moves lately that I could possibly get out of this today if we started seeing a nice rally in Apple. 
So working order there and a working order in Amazon again today, very close to 50% uh, of my max profit in here. If you remember, I went in uh, Amazon not too long ago and sold those October uh, 1,725 puts in there that I originally sold for uh, $17.80. So about 50% of my max profit would probably set me around $8.75. I've been working a nine cent bid for a while. Uh, it's not at, uh, Yesterday I was working a nine cent bid. Today I'm working an 8.75 cent bid, but uh, I am probably gonna pull the ripcord out on this one uh, just because of my long delta situation. I added some short deltas in Tesla. I wanna kinda get a little bit closer to delta neutral and by taking off this Amazon, that'll help out a lot. All right, so uh, looking to take that off as well. And that's about it. Today we're gonna be doing on a, a, our webinar on long puts. I'm gonna talk about all the rules in order to set this strategy up. You can't just go out there and buy puts whenever you feel like there's a bearish uh, market move imminent, all right? We need to have the right environment, the right strike location, and all of these different rules we follow in order to increase our probabilities of success because there's a way to set it up correctly and a way to get into this strategy at the absolute wrong time. Almost as bad as being directionally wrong, okay? So check it out at ProTraderStrategies.com. And that's all I got for you other than if you can't take that, take it easy.